In this video, we will create a proactive cause map for medication errors that occur in a healthcare facility. First, we begin with step one of the cause mapping process, define the problem. Our problem is medication errors. Because this is a proactive map, we do not capture a specific date. Rather, we'll just write that we're doing a proactive cause map. We are going to limit our analysis to healthcare facilities and the task that is being performed to prescribing, preparing, and giving medication. Again, this defines the problem, so what we are looking at is a proactive analysis of medication errors that occur at healthcare facilities during prescribing, preparing, and giving medication. Once we have defined the problem, we move on to the impact to the goals. There is a potential impact to the patient safety goal. So the potential for patient death or serious harm when a medication error occurs. There's also the potential for legal action against an employee, which is an impact to the employee impact goal. A medication error is a never event or a serious reportable event. This may also be called an adverse reportable event, depending on your state and your reporting requirements. There's an impact to the organizational goal because of the potential for legal action against the healthcare facility. Last but certainly not least, there's an impact to the patient services goal because when it, with a medication error, a patient is receiving the wrong type or dose of medication. Now the frequency will be dependent on the individual facility, so we'll just put a question mark for now. This is step one, define the problem, and this is our problem outline. Once we have completed the problem outline, we can take our impact to the goals, beginning with the patient safety goal, and move on to step two, which is the analysis. In order to perform the analysis, we begin with an impacted goal and ask why questions to fill out the cause map. Here, the patient safety goal is impacted. Why? Because of the potential for death or serious harm to the patient. We can continue to ask why to fill out the cause map. Why is there the potential for death or serious harm to the patient? Because the patient receives the wrong type or dose of medication. This is also the reason that the patient services goal was impacted. So we can add in the patient services goal to our map. Now we continue to ask why questions. What would happen that would result in the patient receiving the wrong type or dose of medication? The patient may receive the wrong medication or the patient may not receive needed medication, or the patient may receive the wrong dose, and this is considering both amount and frequency of medication. Once we've reached this step in the cause map, it becomes apparent that we're looking at a process issue. Again, we're looking at errors that occur with prescribing, preparing, and giving medication. So we're going to take a break from the cause map and move on to process mapping. We're going to map the medication administration process. We can begin with a high-level process map. For example, the medication administration process. The first step, the medication is prescribed. The second step, the medication is prepared. And the third step, the medication is given. A process map that is only three boxes at this high level isn't going to be much help with our cause map, so we're going to add more detail to each of these three steps that make up the medication administration process. Step one, the medication is prescribed. First, the physician determines that the patient needs medication. Next, the physician selects the type of medication and the dose of medication. Then the physician either writes or enters the prescription. The physician explains the prescription to the patient, and then the prescription is delivered to the pharmacy. The steps in yellow are performed by the physician. Once the prescription is delivered to the pharmacy, we can go on to step two, the medication is prepared. The pharmacist selects the medication, measures the medication, and then the medication is delivered to the nurse. The steps in green are performed by the pharmacist. Once the medication is delivered to the nurse, that takes us to step three, when the medication is given to the patient. The nurse takes the medication to the patient area, and then the medication is given to the patient. You can see the entire process map put together, all 11 steps. Again, the yellow steps are performed by the physician, the green steps are performed by the pharmacist, and the blue steps are performed by the nurse. Now that we've outlined the process map in slightly more detail, we can 
pick out where some errors might occur in this process that could result in medication errors. For example, the physician could select the wrong medication, the physician could select the wrong dose, the physician may write down the wrong medication or the dose, the physician may not tell the patient about the prescription, the pharmacist could grab the wrong medication, the pharmacist could incorrectly measure the medication, the nurse may gra grab the wrong medication, or the nurse may grab the wrong dosage of medication, the medication may be given to the wrong patient, or the wrong medication may be given to the patient. You can see here we've picked out some errors in the process that may lead to medication errors impacting the safety of patients. Now that we've identified some of these potential errors, we can feed them back into the cause map. So we're going to return to our cause map here. We're going to add some more detail to the cause of the patient receiving the wrong medication. Patient may receive the wrong medication because the patient does not speak up about the wrong medication. A reason for this might be that the patient doesn't know what the medication is for, potentially because the doctor did not explain the medication to the patient. This is an error in step 5 of the process. In addition to the patient not speaking up about the wrong medication, we have the nurse giving the wrong medication to the patient. Now this is an error of step 11 in the process. We're going to add more detail to the causes of a nurse giving the wrong medication to the patient. Nurse may give the wrong medication to a patient because of an ineffective check of medication. How do we know that it was ineffective? If it results in the patient getting the incorrect medication, then we know that the check of the medication was ineffective. In addition to an ineffective check, the nurse may grab the wrong medication off the cart, which is an error at step 10 in the process, potentially because the nurse is interrupted, or the nurse may be given the wrong medication from the pharmacy. We'll add some more detail to this cause. Nurse may gi be given the wrong medication because the prescription is filled incorrectly. Or the prescription may be for the wrong medication. We're going to add more detail to what would cause a prescription to be filled incorrectly. A prescription may be filled incorrectly because a pharmacist grabs the wrong medication. This is an error at step 7 in the process. The pharmacist may grab the wrong medication because of similar looking bottles or the pharmacist may misinterpret the prescription received from the physician. This may happen because the prescription is illegible. Now in addition to these, again there must be an ineffective check of the prescription. We know it was ineffective if it results in the patient receiving the wrong medication. Let's take a step back and add some more detail about the prescription being for the wrong medication. Prescription might be for the wrong medication if the physician writes the wrong prescription. This is an error at step 4 in the process. This could happen because of similar sounding names of medication. Or the doctor may select the wrong medication. This is an error at step 2 in the process. This could also occur due to similar sounding names. In addition, we also have this ineffective check of a prescription. We know that if the wrong medication gets to the patient, that we had ineffective checks at every step of the process. All right, we're going to go back to that very first cause map we started out. We're going to add some additional detail to the patient not receiving needed medication. The patient may not receive the needed medication if the medication is given to the wrong patient. This is an error at step 11 in the process. The medication may be given to the wrong patient because of similar sounding patient names and an ineffective verification of the patient identity. We're going back to our first part of the cause map and now we're going to add additional detail about a patient receiving the wrong dose of medication. Patient may receive the wrong dose of medication because the nurse gives the wrong dose to the patient. We have an ineffective check of the dose, and the nurse grabs the wrong dosage, which is an error at step 10 in the process, potentially because there are different dosages in the same location, or the nurse is given the wrong dosage. We'll add more detail to the nurse being given the wrong dosage. The nurse may be given the wrong dosage because the prescription is filled incorrectly. 
Pharmacist may incorrectly measure the dose. This is an error at step eight of the process, potentially because the pharmacist misinterprets the prescription due to the use of incorrect abbreviations. Additionally, we have an ineffective check of the prescription because it resulted in the wrong dosage getting to the patient. Other than the prescription being filled incorrectly, the prescription may be for the wrong dose. This is also due to an ineffective check of the prescription and the physician selecting the wrong dose. This is an error at step three of the process, potentially because the dosage was miscalculated. We have now built the cause map that you see here. I know you can't see the individual causes. This cause map is available for download on our website. Once we have completed step two, which is the analysis, we can begin adding solutions to the causes that we've identified on the cause map. You see the, the solutions here are in the green boxes. I'm going to show you that. So here's the last part of the cause map that we had just been working on. We can add possible solutions in green boxes to specific causes. For example, a solution to the use of incorrect abbreviations is to use only abbreviations from the list. To the prescription being filled incorrectly, we can add a check of the prescription before it leaves the pharmacy. So it's just an example of adding some possible solutions. Once possible solutions have been identified for the causes on the cause map, we can capture all the solutions that will be implemented into the action item table. And this is again part of step three, which is solutions. We capture the action item and the cause so that we can ensure that the action item is acting on the cause to reduce the potential of this cause occurring. This is the full solution list, but you'll notice here that solution two, check of the prescription before it leaves the pharmacy. Solution five, check of the medication before it's given to the patient. Seven, check patient identity before giving the medication. And 10, an overcheck of dose, are all process solutions, which means they identify steps that can be added or adjusted within our process map to make our process more effective. Let's go back to our process map. These are the first six steps which remain as is from our process. Once the prescription is delivered to the pharmacy, we're going to add an additional step which is an overcheck of the dose. What this generally entails in most facilities is that a pharmacist verifies that for given patient information, the dose that the physician has selected fits within an allowable range. If it does not, there's an additional check to ensure that that dose was what the physician intended to order. Only then will the pharmacist select the medication and measure the medication. Before the prescription leaves the pharmacy, we'll add an independent check of the prescription filled. Then the medication is taken to the nurse. The nurse takes the medication to the area. We have another independent check of the medication before the nurse gives the medication to the patient. This allows us to catch any errors that may have occurred between the pharmacy and the administration of the medication to the patient. Then we also add an identification of the patient identity, prevent giving medication to the wrong patient. Then we move on to the step where the medication is given to the patient. With the additional four steps, we have significantly increased the safety and reliability of our medication administration process. I hope you enjoyed this video. We have more examples available at thinkreliability.com.